Today we answer the age-long question, air or AIA? Just kidding. If I did run some tests, I do have some numbers. Welcome to Simple Run. In this episode, I'm going to go over the results of testing out the EK AIO. Now, before we get to those results, I do want to kind of explain the test for um, anyone who hasn't been following along. So previously, we did the Noctua and HD15. So you will see those on our graphs and see what um, the results were of that. And went through and did the same thing. So the programs I'm using is initially I'm doing Prime 95 for roughly two hours. And that goes through and kind of heats up everything and works thermal paste and gets it all ready. From there, I will run Cinevich R23 for 30 minutes. Now this takes CPU and it pretty much runs all cores, all threads, 100%. So I'm seeing basically the hottest this thing is going to get. Now what I do is about at the 20 minute mark, I come in and I see what I'm actually running at. And I watch that for about uh, five minutes to kind of see where it's sitting at. So yes, you're gonna have your peak, right? The hottest point it hits, but you're normally not running at that. Normally after a while, the cooler will get into motion. It'll get where it needs to be and it'll keep that temperature within you know one or two degrees, which isn't bad. I'm also putting the idle temperature to kind of see where it sits when you're not really doing anything but your computer's on. Now, one thing I will note about the AIO is the pump does have a whine that you might want to turn down the pump speed when you're not running it on idle. Granted, I have an open test bench. Maybe it's not that bad when it's actually in a case. But it is something to note because the Noctua really wasn't loud. Um, even at full speed, it wasn't overly loud. And honestly, once these fans kick up on the EK, you don't even hear the AIO pump. And the fans aren't that obnoxious either. But something kind of cancels out that AIO whine, which is really nice. So, all in all, still using the MSI Z490 Carbon. Still using the 10600K at 5.1 all-core. So still running all of that the same. The only difference is I switched out the AIO. Still running the same two with thermal paste which I will continue using until it's gone. So the next thing is a price comparison. The NHD15 is a hundred bucks. Comes with two uh, 140, 150 fans. They're kind of a custom fan for this cooler. They're large, they're awesome. Now the EKAIO is $200, but it comes with six 120 fans. It comes with a, a fan and RGB hub. And of course, uh, 360 radiator and the AIO pump. Really good value. Now, yes, it is double the price, but for the most part, you're not going to be able to do, you know, the push and pull with the fans. So, you know, that gives you three fans that can go into case cooling, which if you get this, if your case didn't come with enough fans, you're still buying more fans and you could still potentially get close to that $200 mark. But that is another thing that goes into these results is you are paying double the price for the cooling. Now with that, I did run the test with the push-pull configuration and I also ran it with just a pull configuration just to kind of see the difference you may get if you're only running the three fans rather than the six. Now, it's time for the results. Let's pop up that graph so you guys can see that and I can read my sticky note. Okay, so we'll just do a quick review of the NHD15 results, which you're looking at idle to be 35 degrees Celsius. You're looking at its max at 86 degrees Celsius and its even running temperature is between 82 and 84, so let's say 83. When we switch to the AO, and sorry, I did push, I know earlier I said pull, I was wrong. Let's go with this. So the push configuration, your idle is 30 degrees. So idle wise, you're looking at five degrees lower. Now this could potentially be just a difference in the temperature in the room, but I doubt it. My room doesn't fluctuate that much. Now the even temperature is 78 degrees. So when you're running, all core maxed out gaming, it's probably where you're gonna sit is about 78, which is six degrees lower, five to six degrees lower than what you were on air. Pretty impressive. 
Now with the max, it did hit 85C, so max-wise, you're only down 1C. But neither of those numbers are so high that it's an issue. Meaning that, really, the performance boost is bumping it down to the 78 and keeping it at that 5.1 and not throttling because of heat. Now, when we switch over to the push-pull configuration, we're still idling at 30 degrees Celsius. Our even temperature was 77 degrees Celsius, which is only one degree lower than the pole, but the max was only 82C. I didn't see that spike like I did with just the push configuration. So it's kind of your results really is. You're seeing a roughly six to seven degree lower running temperature on your pretty much your, what you're gonna see gaming. Now you did see a four degree lower when it came to maximum, which if you wanted to overclock this more would actually be a big deal because then, you know, when your air is hitting 95, your AIO's sitting closer to 90 and may just be the make or break, especially for, you know, AMD or Intel, really either one. So once you get past that max and you didn't blue screen, then you can, you know, your temperatures go down to normal and you're sitting fine. So all in all, AIO is better. The question is, do you have room for the 360? Do you have room for the NHD 15? It's a large air cooler. Then, how far do you want to go on your budget? Now, you got hundred dollars, and you got two hundred dollars for the EK and custom loop. It's way out there. In fact, uh, my next test will be getting the custom loop, which I'm just going to get the configured 360 loop from EK so we can compare that. But that starts at $500. So you're over doubling again the price of cooling. So you got 100 versus what's going to be 500 and I'm excited to see the differences. I think that's it for this video. Again, don't forget to subscribe. Much more content coming at you. Uh, you're going to see 3D printer coming soon. I've got another project that's going to utilize that. And then we're going to get back to testing coolers as well. Don't forget to like and comment below. Thank you.